Welcome folks. Uh, what I have for you today is a short video, a very short video on how to test an ignition coil. This type of coil here is a uh, an oil filled ignition coil, probably used up until, well General, Mo General Motors usually used them up until about 1974 and then starting oh, about 1975 they went into the HEI or high energy ignition uh, system. But here's the old, old type of coil, it could either be triggered with the, uh, the old ignition points or the transistorized uh, type of uh, advanced um, ignition control on this that did away with the ignition points. So I'm just going to give you a quick look at it. What I've done on top here is I've uh, put some plus and minus indicators here, just cut them out of some masking tape just so the video would show it. And um, it's only really um, important that you hook it up when you wire it into your actual vehicle. As for testing these things, it doesn't matter which way you um, hook up your own meter the red and black leads that is. Okay, so I'm going to set this thing in a, in a vise here to steady it up. This is basically what it looks like. That's the shape of the thing. Probably familiar with it if you've worked on the older cars. Like I say, up till about 1974. General ballpark kind of a year. And uh, So here we go. It's going to be a short one. So I'm going to try to orient this right and uh, lock it in the vise so that the coil doesn't decide to take off on us here. All right, so there's two basic readings that we're after. There's going to be a low ohms reading between these two terminals here. That's for your primary coil. There's actually two coils that are contained within this canister here. And on the um, the uh, the high side or the secondary side, you can go between um, either terminal on the primary that you use for the primary and onto the secondary tower, either like that or like this. It's not really too fussy, but if you really want to pay attention to the uh, polarity, Red in North America basically means plus and the black is usually minus, just in common terms, but always check your specifications. Um, so here we go, I'll turn the meter on and it's very important on the low range, uh, not the low range on the meter rather, but to calibrate your um, your multimeter or your own meter on the low range because if, if you're, you're out a little bit it can actually show that you're out of specifications for your particular coil. So it won't matter on the high reading because you're in thousands of ohms. But on the primary side, always check your own meter and make sure and calibrate it if it's ca you got an adjustment on it. This one, this particular one, does not have an adjustment, so I'll have to do some simple mathematics. Okay, um, I did check this without the wires, and it's the meter that's actually out. Okay, if you have long, thin wires, that can lead to more resistance. Okay, so we calibrate the meter, so we're going to have to subtract 0.3 of an ohm from the reading we're going to get just on the low side. Like I say on the secondary or high side you don't have to worry about that small uh, small amount of uh, differential there. So we'll go ahead and subtract 0.3 from our reading that we get here. So make sure there's no oil on your terminals and also when you test these things don't have any other wires hooked up. Pretty much have it looking like you have here with no wires on the primary side or anything on the secondary tower. So now we, um, on the primary side, we're showing a reading of uh, 1.8 ohms. Now remember, we have to subtract uh, decimal 3 ohms because of that uh, miscalibration of this meter. So 1.8 minus uh, 0.3 is uh, 1.5, 1.5 ohms. Now I've, off to the side here, I've jotted down on a piece of paper some um, average kind of uh, readings that, that you should get for specifications. Remember, always look up the specifications for the coil that you're testing, that you have on hand. Don't go by these figures at all, but these are general ballpark ones if you don't find any other specifications for your uh, coil. So according to this, the primary on this type of coil should be somewhere between 1.4 to 1.8 ohms. So now we're getting 1.8 minus the, the 0.3, so we're 1.5 ohms, so we fall right in between the 1.4 and the 1.8 ohms that's on this piece of paper off to the side here. So as far as ohms readings go, this uh, coil checks out on the primary side. Okay, now to do the secondary side, these particular um, probes here, they can unscrew the alligator clips. Okay, they're little teeth things there. You grab on so you've got your hands free. And um, we'll just probe the inside of that. But remember, we're going to be going up into, oh, this one calls um, anywhere between 8,000 to 12,000 ohms. Okay, so we're going to have to bump this thing up a, a couple of ranges. That other, the first range on the primary only went up to 200 ohms. So we need to get something that goes up to approximately um, 20k or 20,000 ohms. So we'll scratch this in here and see if we get a reading. Okay, got to make sure that you really grind these things in there because if you don't 
have a good connection like you're going through oxidized uh, metal uh, it'll give you a false reading so always make sure you grind in your connections and that there's no oil on those connections otherwise you're going to get a false reading make sure that the numbers are, are steady and not jumping all over the place so we got uh, 10.35 and on the 20, 20k range or 20,000 um, ohms range um, that's on the meter that's basically 10,000 ohms and 350 or 10,350 ohms so that falls well between the 8,000 to 12,000 ohms that I was telling you about so the secondary um, side checks out and just quickly I can show you that it does the same thing also with the other polarity here um, they're interconnected inside the coil and they share a common connection point I would assume I've never opened one of these things up so I can't really guarantee that but you can see there the um, the readout is pretty much the same and just quickly I'll just reattach this um, this alligator clip and we'll go reverse polarity on here and take her down to the 200 ohms again and we should get that same 1.8 now this might sometimes it moves a little bit I don't know whether the the meter or something to do with whatever's going on but it's usually pretty close so you grind them in there make sure last time it showed 1.8 so on 1.9 there it's going back to the 1.8 now so minus that 0.3 on the low side only see it's dancing between the two it can't make its mind up we're still at 1.5 ohms on the low side and like I was mentioning before 1.4 to 1.8 ohms is good for the, the primary side or these two terminals here okay so and uh, in closing now that I've shown you how to show, um, test rather the uh, the two different circuits in here, there's two separate coils and they do share a same connection point in there um, somewhere I'm sure. Uh, just in closing I'll mention a few things. This particular one was taken out of service because this was a horizontal mount or it was, it was mounted sideways on the intake manifold of a V8, V8 engine and there was oil that's contained within this uh, coil leaking out of there and I didn't know how much leaked out probably not much but I took it out of service to make sure it wasn't going to overheat and um, maybe cook those coils and cause the coil to malfunction or quit on me while I'm in the middle of nowhere driving down some road okay so um, that was one problem another one th thing that I'd like to mention is to keep all your connections clean oil free um, if you live in a, a climate where it's damp and it rains a lot you want to be, uh, you know, cleaning up your connections because they do oxidize, they rust, they corrode, they do all kinds of things. So, 100% clean and shiny connections are the best, no matter what electrical component you're talking about in your vehicle. So, keep an eye out for those kind of things. So, there you have it, folks. Um, there's the, the quick version for um, the ignition coil with a few little tidbits thrown in for good measure. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, with all that said and done. Be safe, take care, and uh, have a nice day. And bye for now.